Welcome to the next real virtual tutorial. This time we will learn how to define a sensor for our system and how to build custom sources because last time we used the standard CAN source. So let's start in creating a sensor. I would like to add a sensor here at the end of our conveyor belt for detecting the goods on the conveyor and maybe later on in one of the upcoming tutorials to pick it from the gantry. So first of all for doing a So first of all for creating a sensor I will create a new empty game object. Let's call it sensor. And you can add a sensor to this empty game object by just clicking here on the overlay window on sensor or by using add component and typing in sensor. Now we have got a sensor on here and if you look in onto it in detail, you see that we have got a yellow line into the X direction uh, because we defined here for our sensor that the raycast direction is going into the X direction. So that's how we are doing the sensors. We are using Unity raycasts. But let's first, before taking care about uh, the configuration in detail, put the sensor to the end of our conveyor. Usually I go into the isometric view and I move it by selecting the views. Let's make the height here. And let's look on the side. Okay, let's put it more here to this position. So it's positioned as we would like to position it and for getting the sensor ray into the direction where we would like to have it, we could change the direction here, pointing it to the set direction. And here we have got the length in millimeters. We could increase or decrease it here by changing the value in millimeters. Or if we keep the direction, we could also rotate our game object uh, by the y-axis and here is our sensor. So let's check if our sensor is working by starting the simulation. So you see the sensor is getting red, the beam is interrupted and by clicking on the sensor, we can also check here the status and you always see if it's occupied and which game object has hidden the sensor. So our sensor is working as expected. Let's take a look into the sensor details. We see here on the sensor that there's a raycast, which is called raycast in Unity. So a ray, which is sent into a direction done by the sensor on two raycast layers. And a layer is a physical layer and we can limit the collision detection to certain layers. So this sensor is sending a raycast to our standard layers G4A MU and sensor MU. And you could add your own uh, layers here if you would like to, even if it's not recommended. And what's, what is it about the layers? So we use uh, some standard layers within Real Virtual for detecting collisions. And if you select here build settings and player settings and in the player settings, the physics, you see here a collision matrix defining which layer is controlled for a collision against which layer. So if, for example, a component is sitting on the layer default, none of our real virtual layer, you see it here, 
is checking against the layer default. And we do that uh, for improving the performance because it has a big performance impact if you don't make unnecessary collision detections. So all of our components as for example our sensor has a standard setting for the collision layers. For example, if we select our transport surface, you see that it's automatically added to the layer transport and on our movable unit, so our can, uh, I'm starting it, forgetting uh, can within the simulation. If you are checking our CAN, we will see that our CAN has a layer sensor MU. That's the layer which is controlled uh, by the sensors, a special sensor layer. And it's a box collider here. And underneath we are having on top of that a mesh collider, which is uh, the layer transport, which is controlled against the conveyor, so the transport surface on the collayer. It's not, normally it's not uh, needed to have two collision layers on one MU. There's also a layer MU, which is uh, detected by the transport surfaces and the sensor. Uh, but in this example case, we are having two layers on it, one special layer for the sensors, uh, for the sensor collision detection and one for the transport collision detection. So in your project, if something doesn't work with uh, the sensor detections or collisions of goods on surfaces, please always check the collision layers. And it's very important that you are using these standard layers and that they are enabled. And for example, if something happens, if you've got an error in your during the installation project uh, process of Real Virtual, please always check if the layers are there. And if not, you could always set the standard settings by going to our main menu and selecting here, apply standard settings. This will, if you change it, regenerate automatically or deleted something the standard layer settings which our standard components are needing. One more thing about the sensor. As you can see here use raycast is selected so we are using this kind of beam for detecting the movable units and that's usually the best setting and also a very good performing setting. Another option for a sensor is to not use the raycast and to add a collider to the sensor, a box collider. You need to select here is trigger. And if you would like to see the status of the sensor, you see here there's sensor occupied red and uh, not occupied material. We also need to add a, a, a mesh uh, let's add uh, game object, uh, 3D object, a cube. And this cube mesh, let's move it to our sensor. Ah, that's not possible, so we should do it in a different way. Let's move the sensor here to our cube. And we are going to delete. Let's rename that to sensor and delete that. Now we are having our sensor script, which is not using a raycast anymore, a box collide for doing the status visualization of the sensor, and we are having um, a mesh renderer. I know the collider is for detection of the collision and the mesh renderer for showing the materials, so the status of the sensor. And let's check if our sensor is working as expected. And as soon as the cans are getting in, our change sensor should change the 
color what it's not doing uh, let's see what the reason is let's check ah the layer i need to put it on the layer sensor for working with the box collider so once again And you see, we are detecting the goods, even all colliding MUs, which are inside the sensor. So you could also use a box collider, but I would recommend to normally use, because of the performance issues, uh, Raycast. So let's do it back again to a Raycast. Uh, I'm deleting here the box collider. We don't need it. The mesh renderer and the mesh. And okay, I need to turn it again around this. And so here is again our Raycast sensor. It also doesn't need so many components like box collider on uh, the game object itself. Next thing for this tutorial is that I would like to replace this can, this standard source. You might remember we can create this standard source by selecting a transport surface and pushing insert on your keyboard. This will generate a standard source with that can. But uh, I would like to generate my own MU with my own uh, um, uh, 3D data. I could import uh, data from my CAD system, but for the ease of use, I'm just creating here a simple 3D object, a cube. If you are generating your own components, my advice would be always to build them on the zero zero position. Uh, my part is much too big on my cube. Let's scale it down to 200 millimeters. And um, this cube, the 3D geometry, I would like to have it inside of an empty game object. So my, let's call it my own MU. And I'm putting this in. This cube is just a placeholder. It could be any kind of 3D geometry, uh, 3D design, also with a very complicated structure. We are just using the cube uh, because it's easy and we don't have to import something. So now we've got on 000 something and the same uh, position uh, for the cube inside. What we could also do, we could move now the cube up if you would like to, so that our MU0 position is on the bottom. Uh, that's also an advantage to integrate it into an empty game object. Let's put that on our location. So again, I'm taking the perspective, just moving it up to the side, down, okay. And I would like to have it on the beginning of our conveyor. Let's take a material, on the materials, let's take plastic red, for example, and put it on the cube. So we are having our own MU, and for making it an MU, 
we need to take care that first of all it's on the standard layer we're needing so we select the MU layer so this layer as explained before is acting as a transport collision layer and a sensor detecting layer we already have a box collider here for the collision and on the MU I'm adding a source the standard setting is that it's automatically generating new MUs as soon as the old one is in a distance of 300 millimeters. And each component I'm generating needs to have the MU script attached to it. So everything which is generated by sources and moving through the scene should have or must have the MU script attached. That's it. I've got my MU and I should now be able to start my simulation. And here it is. Our cubes are moving through the scene. They are detected by the sensor and as the cans they are falling down on the floor when they're reaching the end. Thanks a lot this time for attending our tutorial series. Have fun with Real Virtual I.O. and see you next time in our next week's tutorial. Bye bye.